Hello, I thought I'd uh, give you yet another video here because it's another problem when debating um, with young earth creationists. They don't seem to have a grasp of exactly what evolution is. They don't seem to understand it. They, Well, yeah, well, quite clearly they don't understand it. So what I thought I'd do in this video is to give basically a beginner's guide to evolution and tell them what evolution is. So, if you're out there, young Earth creationists, and you didn't uh, block me completely and you are watching this video, here is what evolution is. In biology, evolution is the change of in, in the inherited traits of a population of organisms from one generation to the next. These changes are caused by a combination of three main processes. Variation, reproduction, and selection. Yeah, that's quite simple, isn't it? Nice and easy. Right, now, genes that are passed on to an animal's offspring produce the inherited traits that are the basis of evolution. These traits vary within population, with animals showing heritable differences in their traits. When animals reproduce, their offspring may have new or altered traits, such as different colours, you know, slightly longer claws, maybe sharper teeth, birds with slightly longer beaks. I've gone into that. Now, these new traits arise in two main ways either from mutations in genes no not Levi's you know what I mean or from the transfer of genes between populations and between species in species that reproduce sexually yes there's that word naughty word in it anyway in species that reproduce sexually new combinations of genes are also produced by genetic recombination which can increase the variation between animals Evolution occurs when these heritable differences become more common or rare in a population. Two major mechanisms that drive evolution. The first is natural selection. Yay! Now, hopefully you understood that from my last video, but uh, if you didn't, it's worth going over again. Natural selection is a process causing heritable traits that are helpful for survival and reproduction to become more common in a population and harmful traits to become more rare. This occurs because individuals with adva advantageous traits are more likely to reproduce so that more individuals in the next generation inherit these traits. Over many generations, adaptions occur through a combination of successive, small, random changes in traits and natural selection of those variants best suited for their environment. Now, the second major mechanism is quite interesting. It's, well, I find it fascinating. It's called genetic drift. And genetic drift is an independent process that produces random changes in the frequency of traits of a population. Genetic drift results from the role probability plays plays in whether a given trait will be passed on as an individual survive and reproduce. Although the changes produced in any one generation by drift and selection are really, really small, the differences accumulate with each subsequent generation and can, over time, cause substantial changes in the animals or organisms or species. This process can and has been seen to end up as the emergence of new species. Indeed, the similarities between all living things suggest that all known species are descended from a common ancestor, or rather, a common ancestral gene pool. Although this is a process of gradual divergence, it's took a long, long time. Evolutionary biology documents the fact that evolution occurs and also develops tests and theories that explain the causes. Now, a little bit of the history of it, you know, of evolution, if you like. By the mid-19th century, even before Darwin had published his now famous theory, studies of the fossil record and the diversity between living organisms had convinced most scientists that species changed over time. However, the mechanism driving these remained unclear until 1859. And what was so special about 1859? That's right, Charles Darwin published his amazing book called On the Origin of Species. It's worth reading. Go out and read it. It details the theory of evolution by natural selection. Now, first of all, there was loud cries, but Darwin's work, you know, like loud cries of, from the people who didn't quite understand it, I should say. That, but, but Darwin's work soon led 
to an overwhelming acceptance of evolution within the scientific community. Now, in the 1930s, Darwinian natural selection was combined with Mendelian inheritance to form the modern evolutionary synthesis in which the connection between the units of evolution, genes, no, as I said before, not your Levi's, and the mechanism of evolution, natural selection, was made. This powerful explanatory and predictive theory dis directs research by constantly raising new questions and has become the central organising principle of modern biology. We couldn't do modern biology without the theory of evolution. It just wouldn't work. So, this has provided a unifying explanation for the diversity that we see of life on Earth. There, and that basically, in a nutshell, is the, the start of evolution. I hope that, that if you do hear this and you didn't know about evolution and nobody's ever explained it before, go out to your library. That's unless your, your local church has banned this book. And get out Darwin's book on the origin of the species and read it and maybe find a few other textbooks on evolution and read them as well and you'll find that that it is quite simple and it's quite self-explanatory you don't actually have to understand all the numbers and all the maths and stuff like that they 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 write it so that ordinary people like you and me can understand it so go out go get yourself educated and uh, i'll say bye for now and uh, i'll offend you again later